Hey there everyone, and we are back with what I'm assuming will be our final Disney focused video for now. I think so. Um, and Unless we think of something else. Yeah, right. We're not that creative, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what we don't know. I'm Stuart. And I'm Shelfa Elf. And this is Two Max Try. We want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch our videos. Make sure you subscribe. So yeah, make sure you click that subscription button and like and comment and all that stuff. We like to interact with you guys and we appreciate seeing the comments. So. Yeah, um, coming up we have our, our next subscription box um, of snacks, Universal Yums. And we will also have a Escape the Crate box coming up. Yeah. Right? Uh, quite possibly. I'm um, not sure what order any of these videos will be released. <laughs> but these so. will be the next videos that you'll be seeing. Yeah, we're currently recording this about a week, a little less than a week after we got back from Disney. Yep. So um, we wanted to do this while it was fresh in our mind. and We could remember everything. Yeah, we could remember what we did because it was a lot. Uh, and we also want to share a bit of the stuff that we got while we were there, some of the souvenirs. So that's kind of the goal of the video. So do you think we should start with the stuff or the summary? Let's start with the summary, I think. Okay. What do you think? Sure, we can do that. All right. Um, well, the first thing on our list, I have a list on my phone, that we kind of wanted to mention and we thought maybe you guys would be interested in is traveling during COVID. This was our first time really going outside of our local area during all the- We don't leave the, the house ever, so. <laughs> Very well, grocery shopping, that's about it. Um, but this is our first time really going anywhere with all the COVID restrictions and we were really curious to see if it would be similar to, to Pennsylvania in Florida, or if it would be a different feel, that kind of thing. And then the whole traveling on a plane and renting car and going to Disney and all that stuff with all of the current restrictions in place. So, any thoughts you had on that? I mean, masks on a plane, and, and that's not like a sequel to Snakes <laughs> on a Plane or anything like that, is kind of irritating. Um, it just is. A, if you're the type of person who already is uncomfortable with flying, yeah, like I am, I, you know, my nerves are usually a wreck. I have to take Dramamine and stuff to make right. sure I don't puke all that fun and exciting stuff. Um, flying with a mask on is not a pleasant experience. It makes you feel more claustrophobic in an already confined space. Um, you know, that being said, if uh, they, and it's the weird thing with all of these places, if you have something that you're drinking and eating, you can have your mask off. So maybe get a big bottle of water or something. However, <laughs> I still think that just as a common courtesy, keep your mask on. You well, know. yeah, because they will pull you off the plane. Yeah. Unfortunately, we saw a situation like that when we first got to BWI. In Baltimore, yeah. Um, they had to move our gate as a result of it. So. Yeah, someone was screaming and yelling and. Yeah. Not that we felt in danger but right. it was an uncomfortable situation for sure and of course it's right at the gate we're leaving from and we're like right. where, where do we go what do we do i think that security while it took them a little bit to get there longer than i would have liked they did de-escalate the situation right. pretty well so like that was a good thing and yep and then southwest moved our gate rather quickly yeah and um I think they handled the situation really I think they well. handled it really well. Um, yeah, we got but, so lucky this trip with all the people that we yeah. interacted with were awesome. Like, so nice, so helpful, yeah. so warm. From the time that we parked at the, um, the pay, for, pay for parking. Yeah, we did um, off airport parking mm -hmm. and I got the deal actually on their website. If you paid ahead, you got like 50% off. So it was right. much cheaper. But we did it through the parking spot and I would highly, highly recommend yeah. it. And we'll link their if website down below. If you're flying out of BWI, I don't know if it's a nationwide it thing. It is a nationwide is it? thing, yeah. Then we would recommend it at least the experience we had. And it was funny because the same person picking us up on the shuttle took us back, back to our yes. car. Yes, she got up and she's like, hey um, guys, how was your trip? And we're like, you know what the yeah. dropped us off at the airport. She was very, very So sweet. nice, so friendly. Yep. Um, and yeah, it's it was just nice to see a person that was happy in the midst of everything yeah. that's going on. So yep. we would recommend the parking spot, and I know that not everyone's experience is the same, but check it out if you're yeah, looking to do long-term parking. Our experience was very good. Yeah. Uh, that being said, travel was what it was, um, just masked. And, yeah. you know, we only had a two and a half, not even two hour flight, actually. Right. Um, I couldn't imagine sitting on a flight for four, five, six hours and having to wear a mask. So just yeah. be aware of it. Um, yep. 
Yeah, so traveling with the mask, I mean, I never really thought about how it would make you feel more claustrophobic if you're already claustrophobic, that's true. As someone that doesn't really struggle with that, I didn't, didn't have too much of a problem with it. It was, we haven't experienced wearing masks for a long time at our job. We're not required to wear masks unless other people are in the office. Right. So we only wear them, you know, for 10 or 15 minutes at a time. If we're not, going to a grocery store or something. Right, like not for long periods of time. So this was definitely our first experience with that. And I would definitely say, maybe you want to practice? Like it was, it was a bit of an adjustment for sure. Yeah. Wearing it masks. It did help that as of right now, um, Southwest is not filling every seat. Yes, that was so really So we did nice. have the empty seat between us. That helped a little bit, um, but it's still just, if, you're, if flying is a nerve wracking experience for you, just be aware of that and yeah. know that it's going to be a struggle. Car rental at or MCO no, yeah. at Orlando was the smoothest thing I've ever seen. It was Just a tip, um, if you're getting a car rental, make sure you pre-fill in every bit of information you can because we were literally in line for maybe three minutes once we got to the counter. She got our license, got basic yeah. information, and we were out the door to go get a car. Yeah, I booked it through Travelocity and they didn't give me the option to not fill in all the information. Right. So and I, this was through Alamo, yes. so just so you're aware of the company we went through. Yeah. Um, we had an experience when we went to Oregon where it was very different, where first off we got there and I think we waited A long, the a line while. was so long. And they only had one person working in, I think that might have been through Enterprise? I think it was Enterprise. And then when we finally got through the line and got out to the parking lot, we were told that the car we had reserved wasn't, wasn't available. available. And do you want this minivan or how yeah. about this? And we're like, no, we want the car that we asked for. And I'm sure that that's just the way car dealerships are. For some reason, they take reservations, but that means nothing. Anyway, so. <laughs> at MCO, mm -hmm. since we had everything filled out, the lady behind the desk was like, thank you so much. It's so much easier when you do this. <laughs> She's like, here's your packet. All you need to know, go out to this person. They'll lead you to your car. Yep. And the guy outside was like, any car in this yeah, row. He goes, like, here's the row of vehicles you reserve. Pick one. 30 and cars maybe? Yeah, the keys that? are in it. Just go. <laughs> yeah, so we it. had to pick whatever yeah. car in the, the, we picked the smaller SUV mm -hmm. um, category. So any car in that category. And they yeah. had Chevys, Fords. Yeah, pretty much any anything. model that you would want making model. Yeah, so that was an awesome yeah. experience. And then we were out the out of the um, parking lot in like yeah, two minutes. Yeah, just minutes. another check-in where they scan the barcode on the, the windshield and check your driver's license one more time and yep. we were out. That was great. Um, the whole process I think took maybe 15 minutes. Yeah, it was so quick. Getting in line to, to getting a car. So. And this was at like 9.15 at night. Like this was pretty late. Yeah. Now keep in mind if you're there at a busier time, That's it's going to take you longer. Yep. Um, and if you're behind a bunch of people that didn't pre-fill in information, it takes it's going to take well. a while. Yep. But, but that was our experience. It was very pleasant. Um, I would definitely recommend booking it ahead online if you can. Yep. And it makes it so much quicker for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then... We head into our Airbnb. Yeah. And I would highly suggest the Airbnb. We'll link it down yeah. below if we can. Um, the host was awesome. I think they would have been available if we had wanted anything or wanted to interact yeah. more. We're usually pretty low key, so... Right. We didn't really bother them all week and they didn't bother us all week and it was really nice. We, um, yeah, I mean, it was in, I don't know if we explained this in another video, or video we might, I think we did it maybe our travel day, but um, it was in this like RV park. Yeah, called Tropical Palms. Um, which was Palms. really nice because it was, it was off a main road, but it was tucked back enough that, you know, you're not going to be bothered by a lot of traffic or anything right. like that. Yeah. It's a gated community, so... You had to show your ID coming in and out. Yeah, right. um, and it was really just nice. Like, it was pretty quiet. I mean, the walls were pretty thin, so when the neighbors got a little rowdy and loud, you did hear them. Yeah, we but, were there on Halloween, so yeah. there was a little bit of a... But it's also like a senior community, so <laughs> they weren't up too late. No. Um, oh, but it was... But everyone was friendly. Every time we drove by somebody, they waved. And yeah, it was so nice. The the people at the check-in booth or the security booth were very friendly. Got to know us because we were in and out every <laughs> a few day, times multiple every day. times. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just a really neat experience. So if you're able to, and you're down there, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, yeah, we booked it through Airbnb, and there were multiple. They call them cottages. They're kind of like 
tiny homes that are mobile home size. Right. Um, but they called them cottages because they're permanent, yeah. permanent houses there. And there were multiple options on Airbnb to rent those cottages. And Joelle found out, I think, while we were there that we paid like $54 a night through Airbnb. Yeah. And if you were to like rent one of those outright. Through the, the Tropical Palms right. Resort. Right. It was like $150 a night. Yeah. So, so definitely check out first. Airbnb. Um, so definitely check into that. It was comfortable for us the whole week. Um, it was nice to be able to come back and have a cooled off place to just... Yeah, and it was nice recoup. that it wasn't just one room, that we had like a living room, kitchen, bedroom, because Stuart could go take a nap and I could watch TV or vice versa, yeah. and that kind of thing. And then we had the fridge and a freezer and microwave and stove so we could cook food. We didn't really cook food, but we could have if we wanted to. I will say the only gripe I had about where we stayed is the internet was completely unreliable. Yeah. Um, whether true. on your cell phone or the internet that was in, in the place. So, not that that's the end of the world, sometimes it's nice to not spend so much time online. Yeah. Um, and there was like regular cable TV there, so you still had stuff that you could watch. And, yeah. And that type of thing. But it wasn't great with internet, but that's a small thing considering... Everything all, else you've got. All the pros definitely outweigh that as a con. Yep, definitely. So just be able to... And that could also just be our, our cell phone service. I don't know what the yeah, big we have Verizon, is so. down there. So uh, just something to be aware of. Yep. I think um, I'll switch and go to masks since that's kind of with the COVID thing. Yeah. Um, we brought lots of different kinds of masks, but I had ordered a box of disposable ones because I had heard that those were the most comfortable to wear yeah. for long periods of time. And it was very hot and humid when we were there. And I think you'll see in our videos, like the first one that came out, you see I've got the maroon cloth mask. And I have the That lasted one. probably about half, a half an hour and I was done with it. Yep. Um, definitely go with the disposable paper They're not masks. as cute, but they are so much more comfortable. Right. Um, they're just lighter there and with now, it may not be as big of a deal if you're there during cooler weather, right? but it was hot, it was humid. Um, and the nice thing with the disposable ones is I just brought a few extras in a Ziploc bag just in case. If it got sweaty and gross, you could just throw it out and Which put a new you're going to want to do because I broke a couple mine very yeah. easily. So. Yeah, and we saw a few people that had broken masks and didn't have backups with them and mm -hmm. they had to go in and buy a mask at the store. Which Disney just raised the prices on. Yeah, so now they're $10. Just they were 6 be aware of that that happened like the day after we yeah, left. Yep. Um, I don't know why Disney made that decision, but they did. Yeah. So we definitely suggest the disposable masks. Mm -hmm. I had also heard a lot on vlogs that oh, you know, the first day is tough, but then it gets like it's like you're not even wearing it. No, that's a lie. Not true. <laughs> At least not in our experience. Yeah, the the mask was pretty bad. Maybe by day four, I could say I was. You we know, were okay. tolerating it. Right. Um, yeah. And it's tough to say because the, like the last day we were in the parks, I think was the most humid day, and yeah, so just yeah, your face just at least my face just yeah. sweats underneath yeah. that mask, that mask, and so like I'd right. have to pull it off and like wipe my face. I almost should have brought a little towel yeah. or something that would have helped. Because yes, the masks, they're totally doable. It's doable. Yeah, it's doable. But it's not right. comfortable or. Fun. And the nice thing with. Disney and they have made some adjustments since we left. For example, it used to be you could stand in line and take a sip of a drink, that you're not allowed to do that anymore. Right. Uh, once again, that's a weird decision, but it's the decisions they made. And right. But otherwise, if you're sitting in stationary, you can take your mask off, have a drink, have something to eat, that type right. of thing. So for a lot of the videos, you will see we don't have masks on and we were doing just It's because we were eating or drinking or at a restaurant. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's the other thing I think I would highly recommend is that you make sure you stop for water especially when it's hot yeah. and with wearing the mask you can't just pull like your water bottle out and, and take a sip while you're mm -hmm. walking you kind of have to plan hey let's ha let's stop at this bench yep. take a seat you know fill and up our water bottle always remember you can stop at any refreshment stand that has fountain drinks and they'll give you a cup of water for, for free. free and we did that yeah. multiple times a ideally day. though if you can find a starbucks they'll give you a large cup of water yeah the other ones are just little yeah so we would so, ask for two or three of the little ones right so and the large cup will fill up a water bottle yeah so it's definitely worth it or if you just want it the way it is they've got plastic which i really appreciated that starbucks had the plastic cup or lid that you can drink out of yeah like a not like a sippy cup but right, that well, kind, kind of, of idea like <laughs> but at the same time it was much better than those stupid paper, paper straws, straws so yeah 
we had a the, we went in January we didn't have any problem with the paper straws but we also didn't order many like frozen drinks like right. slushies because it was cooler mm -hmm. so I didn't bring the silicone straws with us this time because I was like oh we had no problem in January I should have brought them yeah we had problems this time yeah. Alright, the other thing we wanted to talk about is the differences we felt at the parks. We had just gone in January of 2020, the end of January, beginning of February, right before COVID stuff. And now we went again in October of 2020. Mm -hmm. So, any differences that you felt that were pluses or minuses, maybe? Temperature-wise, go in January. <laughs> um, it was so hot. And we watched the weather. It was supposed to be in the 70s yeah. and beautiful, and then as it got closer and closer... It got hotter and hotter, yeah. and so each and every day was 88 temperature, feel of 98. Yeah, high humidity. So, and we had one day that was comfortable. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is that most of our days were cloudy, so at least the sun wasn't, like, right. beating down on you. Um, yeah, I would say that with that... And we're not weird. hot weather people. No. So. Um, I got... I got a pretty, I wouldn't say serious, but I got a, a heat rash yeah. throughout the week, so. It's just itchy and uncomfortable. Yeah, it is, so, but, you know, I made it through. Yeah. Um, but temperature is gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, and we did look at the weather right after we left and it was supposed to be beautiful the following nice week. week. So yeah. that, we oh, just wow. missed it by a week. Um, um, Any crowd time? size obviously was much lower, yeah. but I, Still don't think it's it's <laughs> I don't think it's 25% crowd lower and crowd level and lower like they're no. touting. Okay. Um, and it could just be that the places we went, everybody went as well. It could be that I think on Halloween it definitely was. Um, well, yeah. But we went in the morning till like noon or one o'clock, and then we came back to our Airbnb, chill, chillax during the hottest part of the day and then went back for the evening and I think that was the way to do it because we had very little lines in the morning right. and not as bad lines in the evening. So yeah, total for the Magic Kingdom at least we were able to ride um, a lot. Tower of Terror three times. Tower which, of Terror? Not Tower of Terror. We don't ride Tower Haunted of Mansion Terror. Haunted Mansion three times which usually when we've gone in the past couple times if we get on once we're lucky so. Yeah I have to say that that would be one thing I really enjoyed. We have this to talk about later but the fact that there are no fast passes and you're just res like resigned to standing in line mm -hmm. so you just watch your app and when the line is low enough that you feel comfortable standing in it you just go do it yeah and you get a lot more done that way i think in our past couple trips we've done our three fast passes and that's it unless we can get another fast pass we've never really stood in the lines right and we and haven't we'll, done this much we'll get to that a little more in a bit yeah um some of the shows we wanted to see weren't um happening yeah. like festival of the lion king so that would be a difference right and some of the food booths aren't open during the week during they're the only week. open on the weekend so that was also yeah a i mean and i know that we had heard stories of people that were a little frustrated because there was a lot of stuff that just wasn't open and with covid and just you're in the off season just something that you need to be aware of that yeah. if you want to hit certain booths or certain events they're only taking place on the weekends so you got to brave the crowds and yeah. and try to get I didn't think that the crowds were that bad like we didn't have waited in line for food that long no not for food no. yeah some of the rides we did wait a, a little bit longer but, for, but never more than an hour I don't think yeah. I think right around 40 to 50 minutes was it's the max yep. wait time and anything over that we just didn't get in line for it yeah um so I mean just as far as it's just a different world right now with regards to COVID and... And I think if you do your research and you know what to expect before you go, you won't be disappointed. Right. In an ideal world, Disney would have dropped their prices a little bit to match what they're not offering. But, you know, it, it is, is what it is and we, we made the Disney, decision to spend yep. the money. Disney's a big company and they'll do what they do. Yeah. So... Alright, the next thing we wanted to talk about is... We, the previous trips we've stayed on property at Disney hotels. This mm -hmm. time we stayed off property at an Airbnb and rented a car. And we kind of wanted to talk about uh, the differences and maybe what we liked and what we didn't like about each option. Yeah, I would say the biggest downside for me anyway is of of staying. Well, I'm just trying to process how I want to put this. Okay. Because it's it's a downside and it's an upside. Yes, if you rent a vehicle, you've got freedom to go wherever you want to do 
you know, whatever, which is nice. But there is a lot to be said about the convenience of having Disney transportation, depending on where you're going. Right. If it's a bus, I don't want anything to do with it. Um, I would hope, personally, moving forward, Disney does something about their bus transportation. Um, because if you haven't been and you're thinking about going when Disney comes back to normal, they cram those buses full and it's the most unsafe. Yeah. Well, thing. as of right now, I think they only have like four to six parties per bus. Right. And they have different sections that are like separated by plexiglass. Right. So that wouldn't be the experience now. We didn't ride a bus this trip, no. so we don't know what that's like. Mm -hmm. Our experiences in the past have been when they cram the buses full and you're, you're squished in like sardines. Yeah. And it's just not safe and people are people, so the drivers aren't always the most cautious. Like, they just go, yeah. and that gets to be a little frustrating if you don't have a seat, and, you know, you're standing there holding on to a pole, stuff like that. But I did miss taking the Skyliner. Yeah. Um, that's a really neat method of transportation. We did get to take the monorail mm -hmm. um, when we were at Magic Kingdom to the Ticketed Transportation Center, which is where you park. And we also got to do the ferry this time, and that was, that was fun. Yeah. When you stay on property, you just take a bus to Magic Kingdom and they drop you off at the entrance where taking the ferry was kind of right. different and neat. So I mean there might be a lot to staying at like a monorail resort. Um, so yeah, the those are the expensive like ones. They are, but when you think of the fact that you could stay at like the Contemporary and catch the monorail into Magic Kingdom or into Epcot when that's running, running again. Not running that's right not now. running right now. Um, and if you're choosing to go to like Hollywood Studios, you could take the monorail to Magic or to Epcot, Epcot and then, and then catch the monorail the or Skyliner. the Skyliner. I'll get it right eventually, and catch the Skyliner to Hollywood Studios and do it that way. Yeah, so that's three out of the four parks that you can get to without taking a bus. Exactly. Um, I think Animal Kingdom, you just have to take a bus. Yep. Unless you, well, even if you stay at Animal Kingdom Lodge, you still have to take a bus. Yeah, you would still have to take a bus. Yeah, I think some of the differences between on property and off property, like Stuart said, is off property you have a little bit more freedom to go where you want if you rent a car. Um, mm -hmm. On property, if you don't rent a car, you're pretty much stuck on Disney property, and that's how they like it. Right. Um, but then you don't have to worry about driving and directions and that kind of thing. Which wasn't too hard to manage. No, where we stayed was 10 to 15 minutes from every yeah. Disney property, like any park or Disney Springs that we wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. And we went to all the, the properties. So, and it was pretty much the same direction each time we got to the point where we, we kind of recognized where we were. Right. And knew where we were going. And the sign is, the signs are really great at Disney once yeah. you're on property. Um, yeah, so I mean, if you're looking to leave and come back it's definitely more like more doable with your own personal private private or uh, transportation um just because you know you're basically just leaving the park in your car and driving off whereas if you're taking disney transportation unless it's the skyliner you're waiting for whatever the next thing is to show up is, yeah. um whether i think it yeah you know. it's comparable with maybe the disney transportation taking a little bit longer mm -hmm. yeah so we really liked staying off property. It was a lot cheaper. Yeah. Even with having to rent a car, we still saved money staying off property. And right now with COVID happening, all of the perks of staying on property are canceled. Right. You can't get a dining plan. Yep. There's no extra magic hours. Um, you used to get a refillable mug. I don't think they're doing that they're anymore. They're not doing that. So there's a lot of perks to staying on property that weren't even available right now. So we thought, save the money. We're not missing any of the perks and um, stay off yeah. property. So I think both of them have their pluses and minuses. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that obviously with driving yourself, you will have to anticipate the cost of parking. Oh, that's true. Unless you're a, a annual pass holder. Right. Um, I think it's $25 per day. day. Um, so that's just something to, to keep in mind. And we had to factor that into the budget as mm -hmm. well. Um, so just be aware of that. So, I mean, between staying off property, the car, and parking, you still think we save money on yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess that's true. You because figure... the cheapest ones, which are the all-star resorts, aren't open right now. So we would have had to go on the next level up, which right. would have been Pop Century or Art of Animation. Mm -hmm. And those were at least two, if not three times what we paid for the Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So we still saved money. Right. So just something to be aware of with that. Um, and I guess that'll be a good segue into dining plan versus no dining plan. Yes. We, obviously because they weren't offering it, had no dining plan. Um, 
We made a couple reservations, one to Paddlefish and one to Whispering Canyon. Yeah, we also picked, did Olga's Canyon, but we decided to Yeah, we ended up not going to that just because, and we'll, yeah, the reason we didn't do Olga's Canteen is because that's when our... The same time our Rise of the Resistance passed. Right, off. and if you know anything, you're not going to sacrifice the Rise of the Resistance no, to, go to, no. <laughs> to go to Olga's Canteen. Yeah. Um, if Disney was still doing the you have two hours to show up, we could have done both. But, but it's just an hour now. If you've been in any Disney sit-down place, service is not quick. Um, the cast members may have been able to do something for us with yeah. regards to that. But we just decided that we didn't want to bother. Right. Um, so we didn't even go to Ogre's Cat Canteen with them. Yeah, but so the dining plan regularly, if you get the medium one, which is the one we've always gotten, which is one quick service, one sit-down, two snacks is $78 per person per night. So that would be between the two of us, $150 for food per day, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and we budgeted a little less than that, like $100. Not per person, no, $100 no, a, day a day is what we budgeted for food. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that was pretty accurate because we also paid for parking with that. Yeah. And we bought Disney gift cards before we went. So our food was still paid for. Um, yeah. Just like it would have been with the dining plan, and I really think that that's the way to do it. Yeah, and it also, the reality of it being just the schedule that we'll talk a little more about, I think. Yeah, that's the next step. Um, we could dive into that a little bit know, To begin with, like, I feel like the places that we ate this time, quality-wise, were better than most of the places we ate back in January. Mm -hmm. um, I was gonna mention um, the one in Epcot. What the heck is that one? That your favorite? Oh, one? my favorite coral reef. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I couldn't think of the name. I, I, <laughs> it's not his favorite. It's not. Um, I would never eat there again, honestly. And I'll, here's here. Let me explain. Because the atmosphere is amazing. Because yeah, it's, it's a restaurant that's set right by the aquarium, so you see the fish in the background and. It, you catch it at the right time, there are people that are doing the scuba diving thing yeah. and all that stuff. But the menu is garbage. It's only like six dishes right. like, and there's not that much to choose from. I always get the shrimp and grits and I'm always right. happy with you, the shrimp and there's grits. There's some kind of like fresh fish of the day, there's a steak, shrimp and grits. I think there's a lobster. And I think there's a chicken. Yeah. And, and a, a vegan, vegetarian. And a yeah. vegan thing. And none of it's that exciting. So I just... For me, and the desserts aren't anything to do No, for me it's not worth, if you're on the meal plan, it's not worth a table service credit. Yeah. You just don't have enough options there. Um, that's just on me. Some people may love that that restaurant. So I, I think the, the pluses of the dining plan is that um, your food's already paid for. Right. You don't have to worry about it. All of the, Everything is on your magic band, so you don't mm -hmm. ever have to pull out a credit card or a gift card. You can just scan your magic band when, when they come for the check. And it's like you can even charge the tip to your room. Right. So like it's all there. That's the the bonus of it, the benefit of it. The minuses of it is it's so much food. We yeah. unless you like schedule out every meal and snack and stick to that regimen, you're right. not gonna use up all your credits. And to be honest, the hotter the weather is, at least for me, the, the less least, you're gonna wanna less eat. You wanna eat yeah. Um and you know we found that to be true because when we went to Whispering Canyon, it was a all you care to eat thing for breakfast. For breakfast, yeah. and then we were doing Epcot that day, and our plan was to eat around the world. And yeah, it was that we had breakfast at nine, and so I thought, oh, by like one or two, we'll be hungry and but we can eat dinner. At one or two, neither of us was hungry. hungry. Um, we had a couple things that day. And that's why in that video you saw us change clothes like four times because <laughs> As we ate around the world multiple days. Um, so it was just kind of rough with that. Yeah, so you kind of, in essence, waste money on food you've already purchased that you're not going to eat. Right. So that's the minus of the dining plan. And I know that was an issue in January with your mom because her mom doesn't eat as much as, you know, some other people would. And so we technically could have like split meals with her. Right. Or she could have just ordered an appetizer. Yep. And we couldn't do that because she had to get her table service right. credit every day. So if you have someone in your family that's not a big eater, don't bother with the meal plan yeah. for them. Like and just pay for it out of pocket. Yeah. Well, and unfortunately, you have to get the meal plan if you're gonna buy it for everybody in your room. You right. You can't just buy it for like two people and not. Yeah. Two so I mean, people. personally, I would recommend not doing the meal plans. Yeah, and just doing buying 
gift cards beforehand. Yep. Estimate how much you budget your food spend. beforehand. Yeah. Put how much you because if you're going like Epcot for example, or even any of the restaurants, uh, yeah, the quick services, like you're gonna get a portion size that's, that's good large. enough for you and possibly another person. Yeah, we split meals for sure um, most of the time. And you're gonna get those at quick services for 14, 15 bucks versus 65, 70 dollars at a sit down service. restaurant. Yeah, and then the table service require um, reservations, so mm -hmm. that's another scheduled thing in your day that you're kind of rushing to. Yeah, so I think personally for us going forward, I don't know that we would do the dining, the dining plan, plan again. again. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I think we would do it the way we did. We would get a gift card and... And we purchased them through Sam's Club that we have a membership, and they were there was a 5% discount, mm -hmm. so we did get discounted gift cards. Right. And you can go to like DisneyGiftCard.com or something and combine all the gift cards you bought into one, so you don't even have to... Yeah. multiple gift cards right yeah so you know it was just nice to do it that way and I would recommend doing it in that way just because it is so much food on that meal plan and yep I personally don't think quality wise and price wise you really get your money's worth on the dining plan you have to be very conscientious about ordering the most expensive thing on every menu to get your money's right. worth and unfortunately if you are you know trying out a restaurant where you know the prices aren't up there you're really wasting money at that yep. point yeah um so just some like for example um art smith's homecoming would have been one dining credit right yeah and i don't think there was anything on that menu at least for brunch that is what we had that was 70 dollars a person like and so we really wanted to try the food but it wasn't worth what you pay for the meal plan to cover that that meal. Right. So just something to, to be aware of. Yep. With that. Okay, the next thing we wanted to cover was um, in the previous trips, there, our days are very scheduled. We had meal reservation plus our three fast passes um, that were scheduled that you, mm -hmm. you had times to hit. Whereas this trip, we only made two reservations the whole entire trip, right. and there were no fast passes. So your days were much, much less scheduled. And yep. you kind of want to talk about the difference between those two. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was a much more relaxed feel to the trip. You're not, like when we went in January, it's always, okay, we have this much time to do this before we have to be here, then we have to do this, and then our next fast pass is here, or our next meal is here. Yeah. And it gets to be really stressful. I mean, if it's your first time going in there, let me put it this way. When you go to Disney, especially if it's your first time, expect that you're not going to do everything you want to do. Yeah, you can't do everything you want to do. It's impossible. I would say for each park that you're going to, pick out the two or three things, if it's rides or whatever that you really want to do, mm -hmm. be willing to wait in the line for it and just leave it at that. Do meals well, And then on anything fly. else is a bonus. Right, anything else that you can do is a bonus. Yeah. Um, yeah, and as far as your, your meals go and things like that, I would definitely recommend being a little more relaxed with it. You know, see what you can see, but don't try to cram every, because there is so much in these parks to, to yep. do. And I think our first couple trips, we've only been on two, and then this one, this yep. is our third one. You know, we thought we might not ever come back here, we have to do everything, and then you like kill yourself the first yeah. few days, and by the end of your trip, you're like exhausted, if you spend a couple hours in the park and that's all, like that's right. it, and then you're done, you have to go back and like take a nap or rest your feet or whatever. Yeah. Whereas if you pace yourself, like this trip, we took a break pretty much every afternoon, and then either, we would either head back to the parks or head to Disney Springs or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I think, much more enjoyable. Right. Our feet hurt a lot less. <laughs> we got a lot less sunburned, you know, all that kind of stuff was, was helpful. Yeah, it's definitely much more relaxed and enjoyable that way. Um, you know, that's just a little tip. I mean, yeah, yeah it is, it's an expensive trip, and you want to try to get your money's worth. But if at the end of your vacation you're just completely wiped and, you know, being in the Florida heat and stuff like that, it's going to take more out of you, yeah. then I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that you're getting your money's worth that way. Um, right. And I have to say, with not having fast passes and kind of just being able to wander the park as you want and just head to the next thing, um, kind of in order of walking around the park. Mm -hmm. We got way more done this trip than yeah. we have any other trips. Even standing in the lines. Right. We still rode everything we wanted, sometimes two or three times. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think 
The only thing we didn't ride that we wanted to was the Millennium Falcon. And yeah. We probably could have stood in line. We were just tired that day and didn't go back. And we debated it, and it was just one of those things. Do where we want to like, come back for one ride? Is it worth it to go back for you know have to wait an hour in line and then you know, whatever? Went from there. Yeah. So that was, but to have one thing that we didn't accomplish, right. I think it is great. I mean, that wasn't the only thing. There were one or two other things that we didn't do, and. It just was what it was. Like, it wasn't the end of the world. Yeah, but we still did a lot, and a lot of things we hadn't done before. So, we really appreciated having less things scheduled. Right. Um, yeah, and we appreciated having fewer dining reservations and just eating at quick services. Mm -hmm. um, and at Epcot with the Food and Wine Festival, we took advantage of that way more than the first time we went. Yeah, definitely. Which was great. Um, yeah. Which you would have seen those videos, so we'll link them below if you yeah. get a chance to. Of all the foods we tried and all right, maybe all we want to flip these so we end on a high. <laughs> what was your biggest disappointment in the trip? I think for me the biggest disappointment with the trip, obviously the masks, but I can't do anything about that. Right, um, and we knew that going in. We we accepted the rules. I would honestly say not being able to see Festival of the Lion King was a pretty big disappointment. Okay. Um, we went I saw that in January. It was, it was an amazing so show. so good. We'll link um, that. No, we don't have video of it. No, we don't. We can't link a video down below because no. we were so involved. Um, but that was <laughs> a, an amazing show. Um, and, you know, on a smaller note, and we cover it in the video where we go to Whispering Canyons, the dining experience there, at least to start, was not great. Um, we went to the restaurant. We sat for 20 minutes before I had to get up and say something to someone about how we hadn't been... So, no one had yeah. stopped at our table yet. No one had stopped at our So, I mean, that was a bit of a disappointment, but they made up for it throughout the meal, as Disney tends to do. Plus, she gave us a discount and, a, yep. like, some free stuff, too. So Yeah, so, I mean, nice. they made everything, made it work out as best they could with that. Yeah. So, um, I think those would be probably the the big disappointments. Okay. Yeah, you. Which, you know, they're not deal breakers for never going back again. No. It's just, it was, the mass was more uncomfortable. Um... The Lion King thing was just disappointment, and so would be the, the Whispering Canyons thing. But they're they're okay. like in the grand. Well, I was I only thought of one. And I'm glad it's not a duplicate of yours. I was really sad that Woody's lunchbox mm. wasn't open. That was still one of the ones that's closed. It's in Toy Story Land and yeah. Hollywood Studios. And we <laughs> did a copycat recipe of their grilled yep. cheese, which we'll link down below. And it was so dang good. Right. And so we really wanted to go and get the actual cheese and see if ours was better or if theirs was better yeah and it was still closed when we went so that would be my one disappointment but i would agree that festival of the art or not festival of the arts festival of the lion king not being open was also kind of sad yeah. but i mean other than that those were if those were our biggest disappointments that's not yeah it's so not bad nothing uh nothing yep. big to really worry about on side that. note on the mask thing which we didn't really talk about is we had seen some videos saying that like this, the cast were masked Nazis and people were yelling at you oh, the yeah. moment you pulled your mask down. We didn't experience any of that. No. We saw a few people like if they were getting on rides or getting off rides with their masks down that people would say, oh, pull your mask up over your nose, please yep. wear your mask properly. But nothing where like the minute you stopped and pulled your mask yeah. down and take a drink, no one was like, and on Grant, that you. could be a comparison between um, right after now when it's been months of this and the cat, we all know. If you've worked anywhere in customer service, when directives come down, you enforce it really strictly for a while, and then you kind of ease up. I think we were there at a point where they, they eased up. Maybe. There were people that were like all over the park holding signs about masks. Yeah, and that's true. Things like that. Um, but yeah, we weren't like we didn't experience any like Harshness, aggressiveness or yeah. anything like that with the cast members. Yeah. So. All right, and then the last thing we wanted to mention was our favorite thing of the week, our favorite thing of the trip. Yeah, that's, that's tough. That thing, I that I hadn't thought of. Like, I think favorite food mm, okay. for me, it's a toss-up. The chicken and waffle at the Waffles booth was just delicious. And we've seen other videos where people have tried it and they said it was dried out and it wasn't. So we must have gotten there at a good time because what we had was really good. We got good. there, I think, right around park opening, and that right. was the first thing we ate. So they probably were fresh. They were probably made. fresh, but they were really good. So if you get there park opening, get the chicken and waffle. That's right. at Epcot. The other thing was the bao bun at the China Pavilion, or the China booth. Yeah. Um, that was really good. 
Uh, we got it a second time and it wasn't as good, but it was later in the day, so I think they were sitting under a heat lamp for a bit. So if you can get there and get things fresh, um, the bao bun from China, definitely do that. And then the um, chicken and waffle uh, was also really good. I would well, also honorable mention to the Alpine booth with the cheese. That yeah, was that really was good. something that I wanted. I'm like, let's get cheese, let's get cheese. And you're like, what? Well, I saw it and it, it's Swiss cheese. And I was thinking like Swiss cheese, like we get at a deli here. And it wasn't that at all. So it was really good. It, the, and it was just an interesting combination of cheese and pickles. So, <laughs> I didn't eat the pickles. Yeah, I but it, it was it worked. It was interesting. It worked. All right. Well, my favorite foods I have two would be the little Minnie Mouse dome from Amaretz from Disney Springs. That was so good. Oh my goodness, I enjoyed that so much. And then the second thing was the Constance's cake. Mm, yeah, you um, really liked that. And that was at the Liberty Tree Liberty. Square Market it was at Magic Mansion. Kingdom. Yeah. yeah, and that was delicious. I wish I would have gotten it on Thursday because I would have gotten it again on Saturday. It was just light and cold and refreshing. Mm -hmm. Citrusy. It was super good. Where's so the carrot good. cake fall? Oh, mm. you got that I got twice. that twice. <laughs> I forgot about the carrot cake. I'll give that the honorable mention. The honorable mention is goes to the carrot cake. That was at the, the booth in America, the food and wine booth in America. I think it was called Hops of Barley. Uh, I think so. It was really good. I don't remember. Um, yeah, so as far so as food. favorite um, ride goes, and we weren't, we weren't ride heavy, but we were ride heavy. Yep. Um, so like, we were able to ride a lot of our favorite rides more than we have in the past. Like I mentioned earlier, Haunted Mansion three times. We did Soren three or Soren four times. Soren was three or four times, and when we first got to it, twice in a row. Yeah. Um, because the wait times were, were low. under 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but favorite ride, by far, Rise of the Resistance. Oh my gosh, um, so good. The experience of that ride, just the immersion, the immersive like environment that it presents. I was the one filming mm -hmm. that ride that you guys will have seen and I wish we could ride it again not filming. Yeah it is different experiences. When you're looking when at you're, it through a yeah, lens. I know that because a lot of the stuff that you'll see in our videos I was recording it so um so I would say if we if we go back again which let's be honest if we get a chance we'll go back again. I'm trying to convince yeah. him for a December yeah, weekend. It's not gonna happen. Um, Leave a comment down below no, if you want to see us go no, for Christmas! not going to happen. Um, <laughs> I would definitely want to try to get back on that again. Um, it was just a great experience, great ride. Yeah, so really good. Lovely. It was like three or four different rides rolled into one. It was so good and it was so realistic that the little kids in front of us were crying because yeah. they thought we actually left Earth. So, that was my favorite cast member like interaction. Yeah. Was that too. Yeah, they, they when you're Part of the resistance and the first order is yelling at you, barking mm -hmm. at you, go here, get here, get in yeah. that ride. You better tell us, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the little girl was starting to cry and yeah. we were in our place waiting for the next thing to happen. Mm -hmm. And the one cast member came in and said, it's fine, we're just pretending, yeah. we're just acting. And the little girl goes, but did we really <laughs> leave her? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it was very cute. Yeah. And they were like, no, it's just like screams that you're watching. Right. But yeah, so, that was adorable. Very nice to see that they comforted her and yeah. you know, helped her get through that. We saw the same thing on Soren. There was a little kid who was scared of riding Soren. They thought it was going to be scary. And the guy was oh, like, yeah. no, you go on our trip. It's yeah. really cool. So yeah. great cast member interaction. Right. So by far for me, definitely Rise of the Resistance. I don't know. I didn't even think of Rise of the Resistance. <laughs> that wasn't very good. Think of Rise of the Resistance. I guess I'll say the other one that we went on was Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. That one was mm -hmm. so cute and so much fun and the trackless ride was neat and there was so see, much to see. On that one I was watching it through a mini screen <laughs> and Joelle wind. was able to watch and the yeah, actual experience. The, the one where you like start going underwater mm -hmm. was so well yeah. done. Yeah. Um, that one was, I hate the new animation style. I'm just gonna say yeah. I don't like yeah. it. I, I've never liked it. It looks weird. Um, but the ride itself was really neat, as Joel said. It, just the fact that if you get in like a front car at the start, you're not going to end up as the front, front car. car. Yeah, that team. was fun too. That it like gets mixed up right. as you go through the the room. So you mm -hmm. may start off in one 
section and then end up at the end or in the middle. Right. And that was a lot of fun. It was absolute chaos, but it was enjoyable. Like it was, and that was the one that we, we made the decision. Like we're going to go into Hollywood Studios, we're going right to that, and we'll wait. It's a good way to kill time when you're waiting for Rise of the Resistance, which Rise of the Resistance changed if you don't know. Yeah. They are opening it up at 7 a.m. for the... Yeah, so if you have a valid ticket and yeah. of that park registration or that park reservation, right. you at 7 a.m. in the morning, you go to that park, you can get a Rise of the Resistance. No matter where you your, are. Yeah, you don't have to be um, on Disney property, you don't have to be in the park, obviously because they're not open yet. Yeah. So that has changed, and it changed a couple days after we got home. Right. Yeah, which I, I wonder, like, I'd be curious if anyone's watching and has experienced it. Yeah. Because obviously the park doesn't open till 10, but if you right. have a boarding number at 7, I mean, I guess it does give you three hours to get to, to get the park. There. Yeah. Um, it also gives you a chance to change parks if there are other parks open, um, reservations open. That, like, if your one one goal at Hollywood Studios was to get on Rise of the Resistance and you didn't get it, mm -hmm. then you can jump to another park and do other things, which yeah. is kind of nice. Right. Um, yeah, so I would definitely, um, Mickey and Minnie gets an honorable mention on my part. Yeah. It was an enjoyable ride, it was neat. Um, I like the new trackless ride system that just makes it interesting. Yeah, the, the new Remy's Ratatouille one is supposed to be a trackless that ride. that was supposed to be open, but... With COVID, it got COVID. pushed back to who knows when. Um, I feel like there was something else I wanted to mention ride-wise. Mm -hmm. Everything else was just Any of the new ones you rode at Magic Kingdom? New ones? Do we ride new ones? Yeah, Little Mermaid. And... Oh. Oh. Never mind, those are cool. I thought they were cute. Yeah, I mean, as far as like dark rides go, because um, we rode Winnie the Pooh, Peter Pan, and Little Mermaid for the first time. Little Mermaid is definitely the most well done one. Um, I didn't care for either of the others. So. <laughs> there you go. That might be good for kids, but I would not like the lines that we saw for them were an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, they probably were. I would not. Oh, would, pirates, I mean, maybe. Pirates was. was I fun. loved the smells, and I think I mentioned that in the video where we talk about it. The fact yep. that each different like room you enter has a different smell. I don't know. I think that adding those extra special things make it a more immersive experience, right. yeah. and I really like that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Pirates of the Caribbean is a classic. Like that's. That, Jungle Cruise, you know, they're all classics. Mm -hmm. um, but just because they're classics doesn't mean that you enjoy them later on. Like, we did sit through the Tiki Room. <laughs> yeah, we did. I, I we wanted to try those things because we've never done that. And the um, Country Bears. And Country Bears. Country Bears was interesting. <laughs> we'll talk, you've seen that we'll video, see I'm that sure video that, um, and if you haven't, our Disney playlist will be linked down below that you can just check know it out. there's blood on the sand. <laughs> <laughs> on the saddle, right? Um, is that what it was? I don't know. It was disturbing. <laughs> and then, yeah, at the end where he goes, <laughs> and then, <laughs> the weirdest thing. Um, yeah. I, that was the end of our list of things we wanted to do. I will say other about? experiences that we had, one other one anyway, okay. was really neat is, you know, we watch YouTubers that do Disney, mm -hmm. and we actually had a chance to interact with oh, one yeah. of the YouTubers. That, I wish we would have got a picture. I do too. Um, so if, you know, you like this material, we definitely recommend checking out Paging Mr. Morrow. We'll link him down below He's as well. probably our favorite Disney vlogger. Yes. Yeah, um, we've been watching him for quite a while. A year and a half yeah. or two years now maybe. Um, and he's but, just the most genuine, sweet guy. Yeah. And he's funny and he likes to eat food. So we, you see lots of food in his videos. So we were in Starbucks on Halloween, Halloween. in Halloween Magic Night. Kingdom. And we just got in line and we look up and this guy walks by and we're like, is that, is that him? Like, yeah, his name is Nate. So we're like, yeah, is that Nate? Yeah, and so we're like, I'm pretty sure that's him. So yeah. we got our drinks. We got our drinks. Headed and, outside and, and he was he still was right still outside. So we had a chance to talk to them a little bit and just... Let him know how much we yeah. enjoy his channel. So that was a really neat experience. We were hoping to see some YouTubers. Right. Apparently we just missed almost all of the YouTubers. Yeah, I think but... all of them were at Magic Kingdom <laughs> on Halloween and we just didn't see them. Yeah. But there's so many people there that you can't see. Yeah. And it's yeah. because there's so much going on. We were just lucky to have noticed him leaving Starbucks when yep. he was. So yeah, so it was fun. Definitely check out his channel. We'll link it below. Um, yeah. He's worth watching and, and giving some support there. Yeah. Um, and his channel is starting to blow up and we're yeah. just like like proud little friends. He's like, yay! <laughs> we're so happy for him. Yeah. So I think we'll 
in this video by just showing off some of the stuff that uh, we got while we were at Disney. Yeah, Mainly if you... Joel, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much me. I just didn't find anything that was... We were looking for another hat, because Stuart is only a hat person at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny, his mom commented on one of the pictures, is that my son wearing a hat? But Stuart has a giant head. And they, none of them fit. So, yep. what are you going to do? Nothing. Nothing? Nope. So we'll show you our little haul. We'll link below our haul from January. We went a little crazy yeah, in January, crazy. so we kept it a little more minimal this time. Right. So. So we also did go to the Disney outlets. There are two of them. One on International Drive and one on Vineland. I don't know exactly where you can Google them. I think they're called Disney Character Warehouse, Disney Warehouse something. Yeah. I'll put the information in the description box, or Stuart will, because he does all that stuff. Um, and that's where we got most of this, to be honest. Yeah. So let me start with the stuff that I got there. Um, I thought this was so cute, and we'll. Can we take some video? No. No, they're just gonna see. They're just gonna see what it is. All right, this is a notepad, <laughs> and it says, "Home is where the haunt is." And I thought that was so cute. It was five dollars, regularly ten, at the Disney Character Warehouse. Um, the other thing that I got that I think is so cute, and I saw them online or something. I was like, oh, if I see those, I'm going to get them. And I think they were like $6. They were not expensive. Yeah, they might have been even less than that. Might be. And they're tagged for $20. I would have never paid $20 for these two little, but I'll pay <laughs> those $6. Are, those are Disney prices. Right? So cute. They charge it because they can. All right. One of the other things I got here is this tie-dye shirt, which I was immediately drawn to. And it just has Mickey on it and it says Walt Disney World. And it was $9.99, regularly $37. I don't think I would have paid $37 for a t-shirt, but I'll pay $10. <laughs> and then, oh, I got one other thing. I also got this sweatshirt. I thought this would be just like cute and cozy and comfy for our winters up here in Pennsylvania. I got it oversized, so like it can be my like loungy hangout sweatshirt. And I think I already took the tag off. Because you were that I think it was $20 that I paid for it. Um, but it was really like 60 or 65. It was expensive and I got a the great Sweatshirts at Disney usually run right around that, that price. And then the other thing that we got at the outlets was this really cute Epcot Starbucks mug. And I took the tag off of it. I think it was $10 that I paid for it. I don't remember the actual price because I used it already. Yeah, I had to she wash used it. it immediately. Yeah, but it's like, it's so cute and it has figment on it, who I love. And, um, I was really excited about this. They had other designs, and I kind of wish I would have bought them. <laughs> because, and this the lid is nice, it comes apart, so it's really easy to clean. And I really like that. He's definitely one of the more underutilized characters. He's one of our favorites. So, underappreciated Disney character. All right, the other thing I'll show you, and then Stuart can show you the other two things, is I got this um, Food and Wine Festival 2020 um, Turvis Tumblr mug. It was regularly $27. But they had all of their food and wine merchandise was 30% off right. without being an annual pass holder or anything. So it yeah. ended up only being $20. Yeah. And I have one of these from the um, Festival of the Arts from January. So I thought, oh, that'd be fun to have like matching ones. And I use these. They're really nice for like smoothies. So I use these for my smoothies. And that's kind of what I'm going to let you show the other two things. Uh, the other two things that we got, the one was a, a sipper that we... It seen posted and just really neat, and it was from Haunted Mansion. Um, so it is this Madame Leota sipper. Yeah. Um, this was like the big item. Yeah, it went year. out of stock, and they they had to restock it, and luckily it was still in stock. Anyway. And so it's never been used. We got it more decorative, so it'll end up on, on the our shelves, shelves if you back guys can there, see them. which one of these days we'll get it framed so you can actually see the shelves. Um, it lights up. It lights up, so it glows blue and green, which is just, I don't know if you can see that from there, but it's just really neat. Um, just a nice little keepsake. That, yeah, and then the top. Yeah, it opens up. Like a little screw off that you can put stuff in it. It's a pain in the butt to get back. It is, and then the straw yep. just pops up like that. Yep, so just neat. Um, we did look for the Oogie Boogie popcorn, popcorn bucket, bucket, but we believe they were out of them by the time we got we there. We couldn't find them at any of the popcorn stands we looked at. So this is just a neat little decorative piece that'll go up on the shelf. Yeah, show. it'll go up with Billy. Yeah, with Billy up there. Um, and then the last thing is this puzzle. Um, once again, a Haunted Mansion thing, and Joelle saw this online, and as soon as she saw it, she yeah, was like, Yeah, I follow the Disney food blog on all of their social medias. 
and they posted it on either Instagram or Facebook. And I was like, oh my gosh, I bet Stuart would love this. Yeah, it's really nice. So these are the stretching room portraits, yes. um, which are just, they're just fun. Um, this was $30. Um, and we paid full price for it. We paid full price for this. Um, yeah, so we like doing puzzles. Yeah, we so haven't hopefully done any recently, but we've got the one from January that we saw. Yeah. Um, but this is actually four puzzles in one box. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so they well, may end up as a background for this shot as well, eventually. Yeah. Don't, don't expect it anytime soon. <laughs> We're hoping to, when we do get to the puzzles, to give you guys a time lapse of us putting them together. So yeah, maybe so that, you'll see that in the future. Maybe. A big maybe. Um, we did see, but we just couldn't justify getting it, um, Disney Villain Clue, but it was 50 bucks. It looked really cool. It looked really neat, um, but we just couldn't justify paying that. Plus it was another trip. big box and I'm not sure if we had yeah. room to get it home. <laughs> uh, we had the weight, I just don't know if we had, we had the, the space. space. Yeah. yeah, so we'll keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, on Dis the Disney on store. On the Disney store, and then yeah, if we end up getting it, yeah, so that's the end of our haul. If you guys have any questions about um, Disney stuff that we didn't answer or you didn't see in the videos, make sure you leave a comment down below. We'd love to let you know of our thoughts and how the trip went with that stuff. And yeah. we appreciate your support and your watching and your subscribing. Yeah, all that fun and exciting stuff. Yeah. And as Joel mentioned earlier, we do have some other stuff coming your way if it hasn't already come your way with snack boxes and, and Escape, Escape the Creek. Creek. Um, and we are looking around for the possibility of changing our snack box subscription. Yeah, so if there's a snack box that you get that you love, leave a link yep. in the description, or not the description, leave a link in the comments so we can check it out. Not in the description. Don't you can't her, do that. Don't hack our YouTube. <laughs> Please don't. don't. Alright, so I think that is going to do it for Disney at this point. Oh, we hope you enjoyed coming along <laughs> to Disney with us. We enjoyed making the videos, and I think You'll see throughout the week, hopefully, our camera ain't improved. Yeah, sorry. It was that. a learning experience for us. It sure was. So if some of the video footage looked wonky, we apologize for that. But we're getting better. We're getting better, hopefully. <laughs> we figured out our camera settings. <laughs> um, so as you all said, thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video. So take care. Bye.